there is a lot of optimism in the immigration law community over the prospects for immigration reform during a Biden administration. And while anything would be better than the past four years, that optimism needs to be tempered with a bit of political reality. There are just some things that Biden won't be able to do with purely executive action. But real immigration reform, such as a pathway to citizenship or the DREAM Act, will take legislative action. And as of the recording of this video, while the Democrats control the House of Representatives, they only have 48 seats in the Senate. There are two seats subject to a special election in Georgia, which is being held on January 5th. But even if the Democrats win both seats, pushing for real immigration reform when there's a 50-50 split in the Senate is still going to be a difficult task. Could the true path to immigration reform lie in admitting the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico as new states to the Union? My name is William Kovach, and I am a trained attorney. I've often been disappointed in how the media reports on legal issues. The media is often more concerned with who's up and who's down than with explaining the complexity of the law. I hope to be able to explain legal issues that are in the news in an accurate way that is also simple to understand. Please join me and don't forget to subscribe. The United States of America is governed by a democratic republic. If you read the Federalist Papers, you can see how the founders were concerned about mob rule and the fleeting passions of the rule of the majority. For this reason, they created mechanisms within the Constitution to thwart majority rule, essentially giving a minority a way to slow and temper the passions of the people. But what this means is that there are undemocratic features, undemocratic with a lowercase d, within our republic. We are all familiar with the Electoral College being one such feature, as twice in the past 20 years, the candidate who lost the popular vote has actually won the presidency. Redistricting and the gerrymandering it causes is another example. But one of the biggest features of the U.S. Republic that is preventing the will of the majority from shaping government is how we select the Senate. When the Senate was originally established, it was meant to represent the states as states, to temper the passions of the popular vote. Each state was to be equally represented by the number of senators that it sent to Congress. But in today's world, this means that residents of Wyoming, where there are less than 600,000 residents, have the same say as a group as the residents of the most populous state, California, where there are almost 40 million people. Despite the great disparity this creates, there is no move to change the way we distribute senators through the Constitution. And so, if the Democrats are the break, the Republicans' disproportionate power in the Senate, they may need to expand the Senate and, in the process, address one of the greatest injustices that the United States continues to perpetuate against many of its residents. You see, people who live in the District of Columbia and the various overseas territories of the United States, they have no say in national legislation. Guam, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, they all live by the rules created by the U.S. Congress, but they have no way to send representatives to Congress to vote on the matters. This effectively means that the United States is a colonial power, something that goes against the very founding principles of this nation, that people be free to choose the government that makes the laws. Indeed, it goes against the very rally cry of the American Revolution, no taxation without representation. By virtue of Article 4 of the United States Constitution, Congress has the authority to admit new states into the Union, but with respect to current overseas territories and the District of Columbia, it hasn't been exercised because there is no political will to do so. 
This is because if any of the territories were admitted as new states, they would likely send to the Senate Democrats. So Republicans will do anything to perpetuate the unequal treatment of these U.S. nationals. And indeed, in the case of the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, of these U.S. citizens. Well, if the Democrats were to win the two seats that are up for special election in Georgia, they will have control over both houses of Congress. And at least in theory, they would have the power to admit the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico as new states. That would likely mean four new Democratic senators and a buffer against the historic trend where the president's party loses seats in the midterm elections. But of course, it's not that simple. Practically, the Democratic Party is not as cohesive as you might think. Joe Manchin, for example, is a Democrat from the state of West Virginia. West Virginia is a very conservative state. He is only able to keep his seat by occasionally voting with the Republicans. And if he were to vote for D.C. and Puerto Rico statehood, he could very well lose his Senate seat. There is another procedural problem in the Senate. We still have the remnants of the filibuster. And this is yet another undemocratic feature of our republic. It allows the minority party to block certain legislation by refusing to vote to close debate. And that's called cloiture. Now in the past, even a single senator was able to do this simply by taking to the floor of the Senate during a debate and continuously talking without yielding the floor to anybody else. Sometimes a senator could talk for days and delay the end of debate. Sometimes a small group of senators would team up, work out a sleep schedule for themselves and just yield the floor among themselves so they could keep debate going indefinitely. You may have seen videos in the past of senators who were reading from children's books or senators who were reading from the phone book just so they could fill up time during the debate. Eventually, the Senate reformed this rule requiring a vote of 60 senators to end debate, ending the need to actually stand up on the floor of the Senate and read the entire phone book into the record for days on end. There has long been talk of the so-called nuclear option, and that is ending the need for cloture in the Senate. The House of Representatives, for example, doesn't have the same mechanism to end debate. The limiting of debate is strictly limited in that chamber. Cloture has already been eliminated for some subjects, such as the confirmation of presidential nominations. But the fact remains, 41 senators can bring the government to a halt. The argument is that if the Democrats were in the minority, that they may find the continued availability of the filibuster useful, because then they could thwart the will of the majority and bring the gears of legislation to a halt. But even if you get past that undemocratic feature of the United States government, even if you pass a bill giving D.C. and Puerto Rico statehood, there is still one more hurdle. That is litigation. Now, as long as the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, I don't think there is anything realistically opponents could do to prevent Puerto Rico statehood. Even in Puerto Rico, there was a recent referendum where statehood won a majority. In the past, there has always been a split among statehood, independence, and continuance with the U.S. Commonwealth. So a majority vote for Puerto Rican statehood by its residents is extremely significant. But D.C. is another matter altogether. The reason is that there are constitutional provisions specifically addressing the District of Columbia as a federal district. Article 1 gives Congress the power to exercise legislation over the federal district that is to serve as the capital of the United States. 
The founders foresaw that the states would cede some territory to the federal union in order to create the capital city. And that is initially what happened with respect to Virginia and Maryland. The two states donated the land that became Washington, D.C. Although, Virginia eventually took its land back. Pesky civil war. There is also the matter of the 23rd Amendment. That is the amendment that gave the District of Columbia a say in presidential elections. The district has as many electoral votes as the least popular state, which today is three. The Constitution does not give the district any ability to elect representatives or senators who can in turn vote on national legislation. This is a privilege that is reserved to states. So, with these provisions explicitly enshrined in the Constitution, there is a legal argument. Congress cannot just vote to give the District of Columbia statehood. Instead, in order to address the status of the seat of the U.S. government, which is, by the clear terms of the Constitution, a federal district, it may take more than mere legislation. It may take a constitutional amendment. And with the current makeup of the U.S. Supreme Court, that would very likely prove to be a powerful argument against D.C. statehood. Nonetheless, if the Democrats want to break the ability of the Republican Party to manipulate the undemocratic features of the U.S. Republic to perpetuate the rule of a party whose support is waning and will likely disappear by around 2048, the year that the census currently predicts that the United States will no longer have white residents as a majority in this country, and to stand up for the founding principles of our nation, principles such as one citizen, one vote, and equality before the law, it is worth the fight for D.C. and Puerto Rico to become states, and to do so early within the Biden administration. It makes sense not only strategically, it makes sense morally. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If there are any topics you would like me to address in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Now, I don't like talking about this, but I am currently disabled because of complications following cancer surgery. If you're feeling generous, I'll have a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Thank you.